Hi there, you are watching Digital Trends and it's day two of CES live from Las Vegas. And we are chatting all things tech all week because CES obviously stands for Consumer Electronics Show. Joining me at the desk today, I've got someone new, a fresh face here, Julian Chikatu, who is our mobile editor, because we are dipping into new territory here for Digital Trends. Tell us about what it is that you do for DT. Uh, anything from smartphones to wearables, anything really that you can move uh, that has an internet connection or, or really doesn't, uh, that's a tech gadget, that's what I cover. Um, uh, CES is actually not a huge space for the mobile section because we have a show coming right up called the uh, Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. So that's where, you know, actually Samsung just confirmed the Galaxy S9 is going to launch there. Uh, LG is probably going to have phones and all these major companies will have phones there. So that's more of my show. But of course, CES is still uh, a huge thing and attracts a lot of companies and there's still always stuff to see. Especially with Anchor Innovations happening right now, we're going to be talking about what's going on with Anchor's restructuring. And to do that, we've got the Head of Global Communications, Eric Valines. Hi, Eric. Hi, how are you? So great. Let's talk about Anchor and now Anchor Innovations. We've got a lot of stuff. Yeah, and you've got a little, I, I love it. It always looks like show and tell, but it looks great. Tell us all about what you've got out the front here. Well, first of all, I uh, just wanted to say you brought up uh, Anchor Innovations. So most people know us as Anchor. Yes. This is kind of our heritage brand that we started in 2011 and quickly became kind of a runaway success for our company dealing with charging and mobility. Right. And uh, this year, earlier this year, we branched out into a variety of other kind of mobility products. I'm going to use mobility because you brought it up because <laughs> you can actually take these uh, with you for the most part. Um, and so Anchor is still our her heritage brand, but Anchor Innovations now is sort of our encompasses uh, all of these emerging products that we have here that in many cases still sort of bring along the, the heritage of charging in almost everything that we've got. So we'll talk about these in a little bit, but we've got the Roviva, which we launched here, which is the first Alexa car charger. We have the Nebula Capsule, which is um, a, a portable music speaker shaped like a, about the size of a Coke can. It's really beautiful, but it's also a Pico projector. We have a wall charger, which is a fast charger, but you can also take it with you, which is sort of a twofer, and fast charge your mobile products. And we also launched here at CES our Liberty Plus. And our Liberty Plus was uh, one of the top Kickstarter campaigns of all time last year. We uh, gave it to the uh, funders last year. We got to give it to them first. And then just a couple of days launched it to the general public. And it's already a, a top seller on Amazon. So I was going to ask, because uh, Anchor is what everyone knows yeah. uh, you guys for, and you guys started on Amazon, and you're, you know, that's where I really knew you guys to, if you want an Anchor product, go to Amazon, buy it, but now you're sort of expanding, yeah. and you're going to be selling different places, all these other brands, will Anchor still stay on Amazon, or is it going to be a completely new revamp into all retail stores, all websites? Can I just say all of the above? <laughs> no, but it's, yeah, so Anchor um, is still a big part of our DNA, and um, while I've been here at CES, it's been, it's been amazing um, when people come up to you every day and say, they pull out of their bag and they say, this is amazing, this is a lifesaver. And it's this sort of perfunctory product that we all carry along, and you think, man, how do you develop a brand around something that is ubiquitous? But yet, people come up to us, they're showing our beautiful cable, cables that are made out of Teflon and these things, and it, it's really making a huge difference in their life. Um, Amazon is a huge partner of ours and will continue to be a big, big partner of ours. And, uh, but we are, you know, we're selling in Walmart, we're selling into other offline channels, other offline, uh, online channels all around the world. So we have sales teams in India, uh, Pakistan, Europe, South America, and obviously in different markets, we've got to have different different styles of focus, you know, so. And, uh, you know, in, in terms of these products, uh, speaking, going back to the Anchor brand, you have all these different names that, you know, if someone told me Zolo, I wouldn't really, never would associate right. that with Anchor. Um, do you think that not going with the Anchor brand for sort of everything, people would still love and, or, or just remember the, the, the love that they have for the Anchor brand name? Right. So our uh, CEO and founder, he hates when I call him a CEO. He likes to be kind of the main product evangelist because he really is. He's an engineer formerly of, uh, of Google. This is where he came up with uh, the idea of this and then left, went back to China uh, in 2011, started this company. And I, I'm, even he didn't realize it was going to blow up like this this fast. But when he created these brands, his idea was 
Uh, in China, things move very fast. People innovate at the speed of light. They can come up with an idea, and two months later, it's launched. It's insane. And what he wanted to do was he wanted, this was you know, a well-defined bureaucracy and innovation, and he didn't want this to get in the way. So he created these different brands and essentially sent them off to innovate and left them alone. And, and I think the names were sort of a designation to say, you know, you're Zolo and you're Nebula and you're Rove and let's, let's go out. And he brought in all these amazing people from different industries, like top people, uh, major audio companies. So they could go in and take, let's say your dream project when you were over at Company X and you could never do, and you knew it was going to be amazing, do it. So they were all given the opportunity and the freedom to go out and innovate. And I think the name was just an opportunity that they could come in and have a sense of identity that was their own. Now that creates challenges because people don't see the linkage. So now after they've innovated, our job is to kind of bring it together. And I'd say there's pluses and minuses. But the fact that we've launched these great products, I think, outweigh you know, the, the, the branding challenges that now we'll have to sort of remind people that these are all anchor companies. And there doesn't seem to be any limit as to what you guys are trying to launch, because I know there's <laughs> Ufi, if I'm saying that correctly, yes. is a smart home. Yeah. Uh, you have the audio for Zolo. You have uh, Nebula, and I guess that's sort of a, a projector yep. type thing. Smart and, entertainment. Right, and then you have a car charger yeah. that uh, has Alexa in it. So is there a, a targeted scope, or is it just sort of a free-for-all that anyone can sort of uh, have a product at, and under Anchor Animations? So, I think one of the advantages of having such a strong partnership with Amazon and it being one of the largest, if not the largest selling platforms in the world, is that you get a chance to sort of see what's out there. And then through consumer comments, you get to see what's not working. And so when you look at the Zolo Liberty, for example, true wireless is not a new space. There's a lot of players in it. But with the products in the space, you can see here are the pain points and here are the things that people would like. So the first step is how do we solve the pain points, but then what do we do on top of that to leapfrog over it and bring something new? So in the case of, uh, uh, of this particular product, Zola Liberty, trying to get products to fit in your ears a problem. There are so many different sizes of ears. Uh, the fact that Bluetooth is kind of, you know, when you put these in, they're going in and out, that was a problem. Um, and when you put them in and it's a tight fit, you can hear nothing. So yes, it literally blocks all sound, but you need to order a, a, a triple latte and you need to have a conversation with someone and you can't hear them. How do you fix that? So, the, and then of course the battery life. Mobility is key. So, you know, these are great and they're wonderful, but historically the battery life is pretty small. So they launched True Grip technology, which would bring different tips. There's like 20 different tips in the box. You can play around, and it's worth it because you really want to get something that fits. And just to clarify, these are true wireless earbuds. These are true wireless earbuds. Kind of like Apple yeah. AirPods. Sorry, I'm going to open them up here. And, uh, and what kind of a battery life do you sort of see on that? So you're going to get probably two and a half to three and a half hours, but the case itself gives you another 48 hours. Okay. So when you're not using them, you put it in and it's instantly charging and you got a couple of days of backup. Right. It so also means you have a home for them, so you don't yeah. lose them and have to replace them all the time. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. So, and that, so battery life and also uh, the ability um, it, we, we're calling it transparency. Basically, it's just pass-through. So you can push a button and it will amplify the sound from the outworld into your ear. So you can actually hear conversations and you're not like, huh, what? I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's looking at the market, looking at products, how do we innovate, fix the problems that exist, innovate, and still deliver a product that is accessible. And that's another big thing of Anchor Heritage is you know, when you look at these products like this, these are under thirty dollars. Right, right. This is a beautiful product. And it's, what? That's that's a charger. Yeah, it's a ch wall charger, fast charger with two Power IQ charge ports, okay. uh, which will charge your phone faster uh, than the, usually the cables that come with it. Um, but it's also a portable battery, so you can use it during the night to charge your phone if you want to, or in the office. But then you can take I'll it take with that you. One yeah, there you go. Hands. It's yours. Thank you. Great. You know, um, we're actually getting a lot of. Uh, interest in the comments because we are live streaming all over yeah. the world at the moment um, in the speakers system. So can you just go through that because this not right only here? Is it, it looks yeah. like a great can, but it's... Uh, this, is, this has been a real hero of the show. Um, we, you know, when this was an Indiegogo campaign uh, a few months ago, and this became, I think, the top projector campaign in Indigo's history, um, where this became, you know, one of the top in general. Um, I th when you looked at this product, this was a little unique. When you look around the world in China and other parts of the world, projectors actually are the primary form 
uh, the, uh, rather than t TVs, because you have limited space or mobility, people are moving around a lot. So you see projectors all over the place. But in the United States, you really haven't seen that kind of adoption outside of maybe a curiosity or in the corporate environment. So uh, the Nebula team, when you look around the world, you see all these amazing designs and use case scenarios. So their idea was, let's try, let's try to breathe fresh life into this space and find something fun that people could actually consider bringing into their house and actually use. So the idea was, it can't just be a projector. So in this case, what we have here is a speaker that's going to last for you know, a couple of days if that's what you want, and you can walk around and have a portable speaker or your, back, your outside barbecue or in your kitchen or whatever, but you can also use it to project an image up to 100 inches on the wall uh, using either HDMI or USB or any kind of wireless technology that's out there. So, and it, it was a big success, and then we launched it here to the general public. This model's actually coming out for Valentine's Day. So big surprise, red. the red Makes one. <laughs> the black one is available uh, on Amazon right now. And uh, sort of what's what, why would I want Alexa in my car? I mean, I know assistants are not coming <laughs> to the cars, but what's the real benefit of, uh, of it? So let's start with the problem. So most people are using their phone right now as the navigational aid, or they partner with their phone and they do uh, uh, calls. But in most states, at least in the United States, touching your phone or driving your phone is illegal. In Seattle, uh, it's crazy, but a little bit of a tidbit where I come from. You're not even allowed to drink coffee or eat while you drive now. You're using your hand. <laughs> and it's right. Taking away right. From but it makes sense, right? Makes sense. So, um, but the, the challenge is, is that this, the microphone in a phone is not designed for the car environment. When you're, when you're talking, it's pretty meant to be here, but it's not, it's over there. So that was number one. Uh, number two is, if we're going to put something in the car that's going to take up the, uh, the charging space, that's a problem because people rely on that to charge their devices. And then the third thing, if we're going to put a device in the car, it needs to be stealth. It does, it's something that you're going to have to constantly take down when you park. So those were sort of the things that we looked at. So what this is, in essence, is a far-field microphone and, and a Bluetooth and a fast charger, again, using PowerIQ fast charging with Alexa. So your phone's already plugged via Bluetooth in your car. You don't have to do anything. So all you have to do, much like a headset, is just pair this with your phone, plug it in, and you're done. And then you just say Alexa in your car, you're and done. the same exact thing yeah, as normal Alexa. Yeah, so Alec you're going to get the 20,000 plus Alexa skills, but what you're also going to get is voice calling, voice navigation, and uh, obviously fast power and all of that as well, and then music and right. all the things that you... My then daughter screams all of her Katy Perry desires <laughs> from the back seat. <laughs> then I noticed something around your neck uh, that I think you wanted to talk about as well. Yeah, because then I put it here and I forget about it. <laughs> so we actually came to CES. We won a CES Innovation Award for, and I think I'm going to ruin my microphone uh -huh. as I yeah. try to drag this. Can you help there me? We there we go. You got it? Yep. There we go. Normally this is not the use case. So this is, um, so where Zolo um, is helping to drive kind of our design-centric, Soundcore, if you're familiar with Anchor, is actually a audio brand within the Anchor umbrella. It is probably, if not the, um, the top audio brand on Amazon, country by country by country. And so that's going to be a big push for us this year. We're actually separating Soundcore as a separate brand, but yet another brand, <laughs> within uh, our so umbrella. So it's going to be under Anchor Innovations, right? It's going to be under a Anchor Innovations. And um, what we're trying to do is to bring kind of premium products to the marketplace that are priced in a place that, that are realistic. And we, I'm not going to say any names, but there's a lot of products out there that are very expensive with questionable statistics in terms of audio. So what's going to make this useful, and I can't provide a lot of stats at this point because this product's going to be coming out later in the year, but if you're a neckband user or not, I think one of the big advantages right away is you get so much battery life. Days, days and days of battery life. The other thing that I dig is that when you're not using them, you take them out and they're still there. You don't have to worry about it. But the, the challenge is when you're walking around in the real world still is the audio pickup. So this is going to have a multi-microphone um, array in this. So regardless of the environment or regardless of where your head's tilting, those microphones are going to sort of automatically amp up to be able to take in your voice. Smart technology. And then we're also going to obviously, we're, as you know, we're really into the smart space. So everything that we're bringing out for the most part is trying to take advantage of new smart services and voice services. So okay. we'll have more to come on that. Okay. And then you mentioned price. Does that mean that's going to be in a more affor affordable than the, than the competition? I would say it's safe to say that we're going to price it in a place that's going to 
be consistent with what you say in the marketplace right now. And, and, that, and, and accessible, I hate to say the word cheap, uh, but accessible is a nice way because I think the thing that's really driven our brand is not only are we bringing products that are better and better quality, but we think that we're priced reasonably and, and make them affordable for people, which is really key. And I think, that's, I think that's the reason why people, and we hope across the board, is that they've invested in us here and they've trusted us here and hopefully they'll begin to trust us across these other brands. I've got someone in the comments just asking a query about the headphones. Are the earbuds splash proof? They are, Henry. yes. They're, they have a, a technology, I believe it's called IPX something. I can never remember that. But basically sweat and waterproof, yes. Oh, that's amazing. Fantastic, there you go, I love it. Direct questions <laughs> and immediate answers for that one. Thank you so much. Uh, if anyone wants to check out any of the Anchor innovations and what's happening with this product launch, because there are a lot happening at the <laughs> CES, where can people find out more? Uh, you can go with Anchor.com, and actually Anchor.com is still a gateway to all of our brand websites. Oh, fantastic, there you go. Thank you so much. Uh, I you. hope you're having an amazing CES. It sounds like Anchor's very, very busy. Uh, if you don't want to miss a thing, make sure you jump onto digitaltrends.com forward slash CES for all the CES information. It's a hub there, press refresh. You'll always see new articles all the time, especially throughout the days. Um, we're going to be back though because we've got a whole lot more coming to you live from CES. Don't go anywhere.